So I might have to just stand here and hold it. I just don't know if you'll be able to see it though. How are we doing on time? We've only got two of you here. And it's time to start. I'm going to wait another minute or so. Um, it's going to be pretty short today. So we'll just see if anyone else is going to join us. Wait another minute and then we'll get going. We're going to start. Hopefully, some others will join us before we before we finish. They'll be coming in and we'll be leaving. Um, okay, so uh, let me think. A couple of things before I start on this information. Um, this is the last, I believe, the last classroom type session. Um, and then next week will be the exam. Uh, I think it's scheduled for Wednesday next week. So a couple of things. One, you need to keep close eye on the blackboard shell because I'm going to be putting some information up over the weekend. Um, I've had a think about some things that I think we could do for the rest of the semester um, and uh, how to assess this class. Um, so I'm going to try to keep it as similar to uh, my typical assessment as I can, but obviously um, that's not going to, there's going to have to be some changes because usually you'd be on the playground with me. So the first change is going to be that the exam will actually be for grade. Usually it is a filtering tool um, to make sure that students have paid attention to this information that we've been covering before they come out onto the playground and are hands on with these little people. Okay, so the, the exam is actually going to be for grade this time. Um, and I'm thinking probably about 20% of your grade. It'll be about 30 questions, 35 questions, something like that. Um, and it will be up in Blackboard under the assignment tab um, with a time limit on it. But you'll get more than one attempt at it. If that helps, hopefully that helps. Probably two attempts. Okay. Um, what else? What else? Okay. Then um, in the past we've gone out and we have weighed and measured the children, and I've put that data into a spreadsheet, and the students have used today's information to calculate BMIs and identify children at risk. Um, we can't do that, so what I'm going to do is I will use um, previous data and put that spreadsheet up for you to do. Um, Ryan and I will go out at some point and film a few TGMD uh, skills and you can analyze those. Right? Um, 
And then another, another idea that I've had that I think will work quite well is instead of you guys coming out and setting up the playground, we'll film all the toys. We'll have a day where we go and we get everything out of the shed so you can see the range of toys. And then you're going to create a playground layout using our mastery climate idea, all right? Um, but first, I want to do one of those so that you can see the concept um, on the playground. So those are the ideas that, I, that I'm working with at the moment. Um, I'm hoping to put them all on paper this weekend and have them up for Monday, so that if on Monday you have questions, about this stuff before the exam, then you can jump in and ask me, what the heck are you doing, Dr. Wall? Okay? All right, so enough of that. Let's look at overweight and obesity in children. So I don't know if you can see this picture. Caleb, can you see that at all? Is it too? Yes, I can. You can. It's not too dark. No, not at all. Perfect. Okay. All right. So this young lady is six years old. Okay. And I just wanted to show you the picture so that you can visualize the problem that we're facing. All right. Because. Think back about the material that we have covered in lab, all right? And we've talked about uh, the MSU chart and these stages of development. We've looked at TGMD for assessing numerically um, people's children's competency with their fundamental motor skills. And we've also looked at some of the brain research that says the window of opportunity for our gross motor skills, which are the ones that are going to keep us healthy, is five to six years old. Right? So I want you to try to imagine what this young lady's motor skills might look like. Okay? How competent are her motor skills going to be? Right? She's still young enough to hopefully still be enjoying moving around, but it's not going to take very long. Once you're in elementary and you're having PE class and things and you're really starting to compare yourself to the other children in the class, it's not going to be very long before she realizes that she's not very good at moving. Right? And then how do we keep her motivated to move? Because if we don't keep her moving, there's no chance of her dropping some of this fat mass. Okay? So that's, that's my kind of starting point for the information I'm gonna show you today because you are the people that are gonna go out there and work with these children and with adults who are overweight and obese. But if we can tackle it earlier on, in my view, we should be able to provide a skill set that that person can then use to manage their weight as they get older. Right? But she's six and she's already stuffed. Imagine her trying to jump or run. Right? She, she can probably hit a ball really well, right? She can still throw a ball, but can she run to catch a ball, right? So just keep those ideas in mind um, while we look at, oh, but let me just show you, I think um, these are from the previous edition. Um, in the back of your textbook for class, you'll have a, uh, an appendix that has BMI charts in it. All right? 
Um, and as I said, this particular uh, picture is from the sixth edition, so they may have changed up the color or something like that. Um, we have BMI charts for males and BMI charts for females. Um, they run from age 2 to age 20. Okay. And then what I'm going to show you is the Center for Disease Control. Let's see if I can make this work properly. There we go. All right, can you see the CDC page? tells me that their waist is way bigger than their hips, 
now that's someone I want to go and investigate and, and recheck and do some extra tests on, right? Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, because I think in the media and in everyday language, um, BMI has become a term for fat, right? If you have a high BMI, then you're fat. And it's really important that we understand that that isn't necessarily the case, right? It indicates risk. So let's go back and check, all right? So the other data that I wanted to show you, I'm not sure. Can you see the New Mexico childhood obesity update? Good, okay. Um, I don't know if you're all in New Mexico. Um, I'm sure that every state's Department of Health would have a similar set of data available that you could find on their website. Um, New Mexico have not updated <laughs> their report since 2017, so they're well overdue um, for an update. Usually they do every two years, so I'm not quite sure where the 2019 data got to. Um, the first page of this report is quite interesting. It gives an overall look at um, obesity, in the state within its context. A very interesting statement down here is that half of New Mexico is considered a food desert. All right, so a food desert is somewhere where it is difficult to access fresh fruits and vegetables, where you basically have to be able to drive and have access to a car to get to food on a regular basis. So people who live in food deserts often rely on the petrol, on the gas station for um, kind of top-ups, right? When, when, when they're short of food in the house. Um, so they'll go to the all subs to buy dinner, right? Um, even, so it says that Albuquerque ranks fourth with the highest rates of dis difficulty accessing fresh fruits and vegetables. So even, even within the city, we're still considered um, lacking in availability of, of fresh food, okay? Um, obesity prevalence continues to increase substantially in the three years between kindergarten and third grade in New Mexico. Overweight hasn't changed too much. American Indian students continue to have the highest obesity prevalence compared to Hispanic and white counterparts. Um, so it's, it's really problematical. Um, New Mexico Obesity prevalence is about 20% for third graders. So that's, that's pretty bad. <laughs> and if we look down here, the picture's a little worse than that, really. Um, so this, again, this was 2017. Given that in 2017, we were seeing an increasing trend um, it's unlikely that we're seeing a decrease at this point in time, particularly with COVID. 
the best we could hope for for the 2019 statistics is that they have at least flatlined. I think it's highly, highly unlikely that they will have gone down. I really wish they would put that 2019 data up. Um, so here, kindergarten. So we're looking at five-year-olds, right? 14% overweight, and basically 14%, 13.9% obese. So a 28% of our kindergartners in New Mexico are overweight or obese. 28%. Put that in the context of our gross motor skills and our window of opportunity. That is 28% of five to six year olds who are unlikely to be competent at their fundamental motor skills before that window shuts. Right? And that's assuming that everyone's getting some PE and some good instruction and good modeling and that anyone is competent in their motor skills. Right? By third grade, so what's third grade? Eight-year-old, 14.3% are overweight, 19.9%, so an additional 6% are obese. So the overweight issue is relatively stable, you could say, and the obese has got worse. However, if you really think about what these numbers are telling us, probably what happened is 6% of my 14% overweight kindergartners became obese and an additional 6.5% of kindergartners who were not overweight are overweight by the time they reach third grade. Because this additional number means additional children. They had to come from somewhere, right? So it is a real problem. This graph is quite interesting, I think, because this looks at the cohort. So this takes the third graders back to what their measurements were as kindergartners in 2014. So when we're looking at, at this statistic here, right, that same group of children, 13.1% of them were overweight as kindergartners and 14.3% overweight as third graders. 11.6% obese at kindergarten and 19.9% obese by third grade. So something is going really wrong between kindergarten and third grade, right? I mean, it's really wrong by kindergarten, but it's getting worse between kindergarten and third grade. So what's happening, right, is that lack of PE availability? Is it lack of recess? Is it parental model modeling of sedentary behavior? Is it food intake? Right? Is it um, unsafe local environment around the areas where the children are living so they can't go outside? Okay. What is happening? between, well, pre-kindergarten and then between kindergarten and third grade, right? It's a very, very, very complicated picture. But you're going to go out and be the specialist in one of the variables that is scientifically 
shown to impact overweight and obesity, right? Physical activity and movement. So you have to really get on board with this idea. We have to get them competent in those fundamental motor skills. And we have to get them using those skills to become more physically active on a regular basis every day. Right? Once a week is not enough. It's got to be every single day. And that's what I had for you. <laughs> so, as I said, short and sweet, but I think very important. Hopefully you think important. <laughs> because I just don't know what the answer is. You know, when we look at the research from, from my colleagues and my peer group, I've been here 14 years. I was in grad school five years. We've known this stuff for a long, long time, and the picture is getting worse, not better. So we are failing miserably with these young children, and we need to change that and turn it around. Questions, comments, concerns? No. No? <laughs> now you should have concerns, Kayla. You've got to teach this lot. <laughs> what I, well, I guess it's like what I'm more concerned about is like people do already know that obese is an epidemic and it's been going on for a while now. And I don't know, just nowadays I don't see much change. Like I don't see like school systems trying to change anything about that, especially the food that they serve at school. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's no healthier than your average McDonald's Happy Meal. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're absolutely right. And this, you know, okay, so I'm, I'm actually gonna put something up on Blackboard hopefully next week, but I'll, I'll give a quick plug now. This is why you guys need to get out and vote, right? It doesn't matter who you vote, I'm not telling you who to vote for, but you need to vote, particularly in your local elections where you could maybe have some influence over the school system, you know, the school board of regents or something like that, to, to encourage more PE or more after school activity or, right? You, you, you've got that voice and it's time to go and use it to help these kids because, yeah, it isn't getting any better. It really isn't. Um, I don't know, I'm, I, I'm not up enough on the uh, public education system um, in New Mexico, but in, because I was working with um, the, the teacher ed people when I was in grad school, I mean the, the number of schools in Alabama and Georgia that cut recess so that the kids had more time sitting down, not learning how to read or write or do their maths so that they could get higher scores on those tests and, the, and then higher scores meant the school got more money. But we can teach reading, we can teach math within PE, within movement. We don't have to have them sitting down at a desk to do that. And you can still get good scores on these tests. Right? So, yeah, things have definitely got, I mean, they haven't changed in 20 odd years. You know, despite the fact that people have tried some things and you know, I, I, I know there was a big thing at one point, there's an English chef that came over and tried to change up the food production within schools and things like that. Um, you know, I don't know the answer. Um, 
and, and my area of expertise is the movement, so that's the thing I try to, to give. You know, maybe that's something we can change. More PE, more recess. And, yeah. Okay. Well, that was it for today. Have a lovely weekend. The warm weather is supposed to be on its way back, thank goodness. Um, and I will see you Monday. Keep an eye out on Blackboard. Um, and there should be some stuff coming up over the weekend, probably Sunday because I'm backed up. Uh, and yeah, have a great weekend. Enjoy. See you. <laughs>